Hi there, this is James Swanick, and you're listening to the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast, where you learn how to take back control over alcohol and live a life of health, wealth, love, and happiness. Welcome to the show. I'm James Swanick. This is a recording of one of our amazing coaches, Juliana Mendoza, giving a talk at our annual Alcohol Free Lifestyle Live event. It took place in Medellin, Colombia in January 2023, and Juliana is an emotions expert. So if you've been wondering how do you process your stress, your anxiety, how do you uh, avoid being so irritable, oh, there goes a the phone, uh, so stressed out all the time, uh, Juliana is an expert on how we process emotions, the science, the neuroscience of how we process emotions and how you can uh, handle those emotions. So this is for you. And uh, you'll hear there are people in the background. We were in a hotel room in the suburb of El Poblado in Medellin, Colombia. We had 30 of our alcohol-free lifestyle clients fly down for our annual retreat. You'll hear phrases like Project 90, Beyond 90. Project 90 is our 90-day stop drinking program. Beyond 90 is the program that takes place after Project 90, where we bring in New York Times bestselling authors, Nobel Prize winning economists, uh, Olympians to coach our clients in peak performance. Things like how to process emotions, how to sleep better. We've had John Gray, who wrote the book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, come and speak. We've had one of the world's top sleep doctors, Dr. Michael Bruce. We've had Tony Jeffries, who is a uh, medal-winning boxer from the Olympics. Uh, So if you hear P90, B90, that's what that is referring to. Um, So this is Juliana Mendoza, one of our amazing coaches uh, of our clients in Project 90. If you want some details about Project 90, you can always go to Alcohol Free Lifestyle dot com slash project 90 for now here is juliana mendoza so thank you guys i'm gonna try my best to talk as loud as i can because my mouth is hurting a little bit because i was jumping too much before so yes we're gonna talk about beautiful emotions today we all have them we have emotions inside of us all the time even if we are not aware of it So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna share some beautiful, beautiful knowledge that they're gonna work like little seeds that we're gonna put them in your brains. And it's your job if you want to grow them and turn them into beautiful trees. So I welcome you to be present here in the moment, uh, just listening to the concepts. So emotions. So we're going to go through the process to understand what an emotion is. Then we're going to understand the different types of emotions and how it works in our body. And then uh, we're going to understand what we can do uh, with them. Yeah. So um, the first thing that I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to want you to write down what emotions do you usually experience more, more often? And how long do they stay with you? So if you experience anger very often, so how long do you usually stay with anger for? A few minutes, a few seconds, a few hours, a few days, or a few weeks, or years. You could be angry at someone for years. So uh, just write down. Let's just do it really quickly. Which emotions? are the most, the ones that are most often in your life. Okay, let's just stop there now. So what we're gonna talk, we're gonna leave it there and we're gonna uh, have that information for a little bit later. So uh, what is an emotion? Like the word says, emotion, E for energy, in motion. So an emotion is an energy that is going through, through our body that is, it needs to move because it's Energy. Energy never stays still, it always moves. Energy is also, they are chemicals. They are part of our biology because they are chemicals that actually run into our bodies. The, everything that exists in this world is just made of energy. Same with the chemistry that happens in our body, it's all energy. And we're going to understand this in a second. Energy, eh, emotions are the language of the body, it's how the body communicates with us. Yeah? Uh, the same with the mind, the language of the mind is thoughts. The language of the, our body is emotions. Emotions are an internal guidance system that we have. Like example, when we are in danger, we get an emotion of fear saying, run. 
But in these new days, we don't have tigers or we don't have animals or danger, physical dangers going around, but we have mental dangers appearing all the time in our minds that create emotions. So now this guidance system is uh, kind of getting out of control because it's not working like it used to work when we were living in caves, but it still is a guidance system. Uh, they are automatic, they are instinctive, spontaneous, and part of our genetics. Yep, that's what uh, emotions are. So we're gonna talk about the types of emotions. So we have positive and negative emotions. But positive doesn't mean that they are good for you. It just means that they carry a higher vibration frequency. And negative emotions, it doesn't mean that they are bad for you. It just means that the frequency that they carry is lower than the positive emotions, yeah? But of course, society have taught us that negative emotions are bad and that positive emotions are good for us. But they, none of that. They just high frequency or low frequency. So when we have a positive emotion going through us, it means that we have a lots of very high frequency going through us, meaning we have more energy to do things. And when we have a negative emotion going through us, it means that the frequency of this energy is low, so we feel like we don't have enough energy to do things. That's all that it means. So now we're gonna have a look at the structure of how an emotion works. This is the biology of an emotion. So emotions are not something like transparent that we're feeling, it's actually a chemistry happening inside our body that we're experiencing, yeah? So the first thing that happens uh, is that we have an external signal, could be anything, in this case it's a burp, a person burping outside. Then these signals go and get captured by our senses. These signals then get uh, filtered by our programming. Our programming is the set of beliefs, values, traumas, and, and meanings that we have learned through our life. Uh, then this uh, gets, uh, gets given a meaning as after it passes through our programming. In this moment, our neurons are working because they're, they're connecting with each other and they're trying to find what is happening, what this signal means. And then after that, then it, the result is a thought and an emotion. So we have here two neurons. As soon as they, they make connection, they release some chemi chemicals and these chemicals between them are called neurotransmitters. These neurotransmitters get released from our brain, from the neurons, and they pass through our body. And this process of these neurotransmitters going through our body is an emotion. This is an emotion, so it's chemicals going through our body. So whenever we're feeling an emotion, we cannot force us to not to have it because it is happening through us. It's impossible to deny or try to avoid that we're angry because anger is happening through our body. So what happened, the neurotransmitters from these neurons go through the body and get attached to the uh, receptors in, in the cells in our body. And then we start feeling sensations like when we feel scared, we feel the stomach super tight and we feel all the sensations, that's the, the chemistry getting attached to the cells and it creates sensations in our body. But we just had no idea that this was the case, that emotions are actually chemicals happening in our body. So it's a beautiful thing having a body that works this beautiful. And we just, when we feel these negative emotions, we feel like, oh, I don't want it. But you cannot want it because it is happening in a chemistry. It's an actual physical reaction happening in the body that cannot disappear just because your mind is telling you that you don't want it. So, um, and of course, when we have a, a, an emotion going through our body, so this energy, because chemi chemicals are energy, then we get a reaction. So we react to whatever is happening to our body. So um, 
So there is a, a brain scientist called Jill Bolt Taylor that she uh, discovered that this process of this chemistry going through the body, so the emotions, these emotions happening in our body, last between 90 seconds to 2.5 minutes. So that's what it takes for the neuron to release, the neurotransmitters go to the cells, attach to the, to the receptors, and then the receptor release the chemical. That's, that's a chem emotion. It takes between 90 seconds to 2.5 minutes for that process to happen. But as you guys just saw, sometimes we feel emotions for longer than 90 seconds, more longer than 2.5 minutes. So what is going on? Is, she, is this lady crazy? Because we feel it for so long. There is something wrong because we feel it so long. Well, this doctor said that we feel these emotions longer because we choose to feel them longer because we create more chemistry that creates this emotion again and again and again. So that means that if we are the ones that are choosing to feel the emotions, then we can choose any emotion that we want because we are the ones creating the chemistry. Our body is the one creating the chemistry that creates the emotion. So the person outside could be screaming or whatever, but it's our brain, the one that is creating the chemistry. The person outside cannot create the chemistry in our brain that creates the emotion. So that's a very, very powerful thing to know, that it is in our power to control the chemistry or to handle the chemistry. But how do we do that? Okay. We have, since little, we were taught not to feel emotions because of course it feels uncomfortable being angry or have sadness. It feels horrible inside, it's very uncomfortable. So I imagine that when you were little, you, many of you heard things like, well, don't cry, please don't cry. Our parents, all of them told us that. They saw us crying because we hurt our leg or, or a kid said something nasty to us and we started crying. Our parents came to us, gave us a hug and said, don't cry, please don't cry. They thought that they were doing something beautiful to us and protecting us, but all that they were doing is saying to our brain, it's wrong to feel this right now. You should, you should be feeling something else. Stop that feeling right now but we didn't know that that's what we were learning. And we heard all the things like men don't cry, which is again saying to ourselves, you shouldn't be crying because men don't cry. So men had to force themselves not to feel what they were feeling because society said, you shouldn't be feeling what you're feeling right now that is making you cry. We've, we heard this from our parents over and over again, training us not to feel the emotions that we were feeling, yeah? And of course, that is a way to repress because we're not allowing ourselves to hear and to feel this natural, beautiful chemistry that is happening in our bodies, yeah? So this, all these uh, things that our parents said to us become, um, become uh, limiting beliefs when we become adults. And you start hearing things like, uh, you believe that emotions are here to make you feel happy or comfortable only, that you shouldn't be feeling sad or depressed or anxious, that that's wrong. That men don't cry, they are strong. What I feel is very childish. I'm so emotional, I'm so soft, I'm so childish because I'm feeling all these emotions. Um, it wasn't a big deal. It's not that important, I need to be strong. We say that to ourselves so many times. And that comes from all these learnings when we were little. So now we have all these limiting thoughts about our own emotions that we say to ourselves constantly. It is so disgusting to be so sensitive. I hear that so many times. Uh, that others don't notice, please, that no one notice that I feel this way, that I'm so scared or that I'm so embarrassed. Um, 
I shouldn't feel like this if I have been working on this for so long. That's again limiting you from feeling your own self. I don't want the uncomfortable emotions that I already healed to keep coming back. I just want to be happy all the time. Well, as we learned before, we can't do that because it's chemistry. The anger, the sadness, the anxiety is chemistry. So we cannot avoid them. They just happen in our body. If you let yourself feel something negative, you will lose control and you will become depressed. It can't be that it hurts so much. I'll never get out of this feeling. I sure feel that way because I'm so hormonal. We women say that to us all the time when we get in the period. I shouldn't feel like this. I'll pretend I don't feel anything. Everything is fine. We say this one all the time. I'm just going to pretend no, everything is fine, everything's fine, nothing's happening. And we just not allowing our body, ourselves to feel how the chemistry is happening because that is what is happening. Chemistry running through our body. So let's have a look now how this process works. So we have primary emotions and we have secondary emotions. So what is a primary emotion? A primary emotion is the emotion that arises naturally and instantaneously and it comes out of your programming. So throughout our life, we have learned all kinds of meanings and beliefs and things about everything. And that when the signals get filtered, then all the programming gives some meaning to all that signals. And immediately, we have a primary emotion coming out. That is out of control. It's just boom, immediately. It just goes faster than the speed of light they have learned. And then what happens? Let's just give an example. Uh, let's say we have husband and wife, and the wife says to the husband, oh, you're so useless, you didn't take the bin out again. And the husband straight away reacts angry and screams back at her something really nasty. And then uh, he felt anger. Now he was aware of anger, and he then says, Oh, Jesus, I shouldn't be feeling angry. I shouldn't be feeling angry. It's just horrible. I shouldn't feel this hor Whatever it is, that's a limiting belief coming into us. So when you have a primary emotion arising, and then you add on top of that a limiting belief about your emotion, what happens is another negative emotion arises. So that's when it lasts longer because you couldn't accept the first one. Because you added a limited belief, now you created a second chemistry that needs to happen through your body, because as we said, it lasts between two, 90 seconds to 2.5. So now we have 2.5 minutes plus another 2.5 minutes, now we're in five minutes. And if you keep doing that, you could be the whole day feeling negative emotions. So that's how it goes. We are the creators of these constant long emotions that don't disappear in 90 seconds, like the scientists said, because we have learned not to feel emotions and to believe that they're wrong in so many ways, and to believe that we should be feeling happy all the time, and to not appreciate that this is our body doing an excellent job doing connections and releasing chemistry, it does feel uncomfortable, but that's the nature of it. It's chemistry going through it, yeah? So of course that creates a bomb because you will feel horrible and you will feel more stressed and more agitated and worse than when you started. Of course that is destructive for you because you keep holding on to the things, and you're not feeling. You're not feeling your body. You're not accepting your nature as a human. You're denying it. You're saying, I don't want this body to work like this. I don't want it. That's what you, you're saying when you don't allow yourself to feel emotions. You're saying, you shit body. You shouldn't release chemicals. I don't want these chemicals to go through my body. I don't want it. So you're denying your body. You deny your biology, which is terrible, isn't it? Because we are living in a body. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. 
It's our house and it's beautiful and we don't even understand it. We don't even understand how it works. Hmm? So, now I want you guys to go back and find these limiting beliefs that you say to yourself constantly about emotions. Like, I'm so sensitive, I'm always so sensitive. Oh no, it must be the peer that is making me feel this way. I'm just gonna ignore it. So I want you to go and have a look through your emotions and find some of them. The ones that you have heard, like men don't cry, the ones that you kind of understand that you have in you. So let's just write down to see, to discover. This is a self-knowledge process. Okay. You guys are gonna have more time later to keep going, but it's just, this is a self-awareness process for you to know yourself, yeah? Because if, you know, if you don't know yourself, so how are you gonna handle yourself? Okay, so what happens when we constantly use limiting beliefs about our emotions? Well, we disconnect from our bodies, of course, because we don't want to feel it. We don't want to know what is happening in this body. We just want to avoid it. And then we start using emotional repression. What is emotional repression? Well, it is a habit, it's an activity, a substance that prevents us from connecting with emotions and promotes the disconnection from our body. So that is drugs, alcohol, food, compulsive buying, work, technology, sex, addictions, all kind of stuff could be used to, as a repression, yeah? But what happens when we stop drinking alcohol, we start connecting back to our bodies. We start hearing the information again from our bodies. All this beautiful chemistry that feels uncomfortable sometimes, but sometimes feels awesome. Yeah? Now we can hear it. So um, let's have a look to see what other things we use that make us extend the feeling of an emotion. So as we learn, we have the limiting beliefs. So let's go back to the example of the wife and the husband. So the husband got angry because the wife said whatever. So then he thought, oh, I shouldn't be angry because this is how I act. This is horrible, I shouldn't be angry. So he feels guilty because he was feeling anger. Then he says, ah, oh, but my wife shouldn't be doing that. If she didn't do that, then I wouldn't act like this. Then he gets back to anger. So that's another 2.5 minutes plus another 2.5 minutes. Then he st st the whole day starts like thinking about the situation. Oh, just, I did this, oh my God, but I should. The whole day he's seeing it inside his mind, the situation over and over again. So he ruminates and ruminates. So okay, uh, what happens, he feels sh shame then because he's like, oh my God, no, I should. Shame appears, so that's another 2.5 minutes. And then he starts holding on to the cause of what happens, what he believes was the cause. And then he gets angry again. And then he represses and starts drinking alcohol and blah, blah, blah. So then it starts suffering. Because when you repress or when you disconnect your, yourself from your body, the subconscious mind with the autonomic nerve system takes over that chemistry and it starts doing it itself. On his own. So then you are years angry because, or weeks because your wife told you that you're useless because you didn't take the bin out. So that's how we create, make ourselves, this is how we choose to hold on to emotions. It's actually us doing it. And this is the process how it happens. It's an accumulation of doing and doing. So this one happened because this, this was released into the body and it lasts 90 seconds and it got released from the, new, the receptors. But as soon as you add this one, you create a new chemistry that takes another 2.5 minutes to release. But if you add another one, another chemistry will gonna appear and it just keeps going. The body needs to do the process. It's not gonna, it's not gonna say like, oh, I'm just gonna release the, neuro, the neurotransmitters here, but I'm not gonna release it into the cells. And the cells are not gonna say, ah, oh, no, I'm not gonna accept this chemistry. No, I don't want it. No, it's just, it needs to happen. It's how it goes. So you have to allow yourself to feel the 90 seconds of anger, the 90 seconds of guilt because it is a physical action, yeah? So now we're gonna learn the process of feeling an emotion.
the process of feeling this chemistry in our bodies that we didn't know about. So these are, these are the steps. The first one is we have to allow ourselves to feel emotions. We have to give permission to ourselves to feel emotion. And how do we do this? Well, now we know that an emotion lasts between 90 seconds to 2.5 minutes. So we have to give a space that time, meaning 90 seconds to 2.5 minutes for the chemistry to pass through our bodies, yeah? So if we feel anger because our wife said to us, you're useless, we're like, fuck, I need to give 90 seconds, 2.5 minutes <laughs> for this to go through me. But not only that, we have to breathe because of course we're gonna react, yeah? We are used to reacting straight away when we feel an emotion. So now because we're gonna use self-awareness of this whole beautiful process, then we have to know that we have to give space to ourselves, we have to breathe <sighs> deeply because when we breathe, we're adding energy in our bodies and we are actually putting ourselves in the present moment. We are removing ourselves from the focus away from the thoughts because of course it's gonna be all these thoughts about our wives or our husbands saying, Oh, this fucking bitch is telling me. All these thoughts are gonna come up that are gonna add more chemistry. So we're gonna breathe to try to stay here in the present moment without the focus towards the, the thoughts. They're not, not gonna disappear, but we're gonna breathe to try to stay with the body. When we breathe and we observe the, the breath, we are connecting with our bodies because it is happening in our bodies. We're using the lungs, we're using in our nose. So observing the breath and breathing is taking our attention towards our beautiful bodies. Hmm? And now we're gonna use empowering beliefs about emotions. So let's have a look to see how they look like. So now we're gonna say to ourselves, all emotions are normal part of biology of the body because we saw it before. They are biology, they are the biology of our body, so they are precious. It is normal to feel any emotions because as we saw, they are no negative or positive, they're just high vibration or low vibration. They're beautiful, they're chemistry. It's, a, it's a hu I'm a human and it's normal to feel all emotions because I'm a human and it's a chemistry. If you don't want to feel emotions, then seriously just become something else because you're gonna feel them. This part of being a human. You will have to turn into a rock. That's the only way not to feel them, not to feel this chemistry going through your body, yeah? Emotions are energy in motion. That means that they don't stay the same, they move because the chemistry, as we said, Last 90, 90 seconds to 2.5 minutes is moving, is changing, and it's gonna go away after the cell releases the attachment to the, the receptor. It goes, it goes away. It is normal to have different emotions through the day. So to feel the negative emotions, positive through the day, is normal to have all this. When I allow myself to feel emotions, I'm honoring my human nature. I'm accepting that this is how it is, and my, my body produces, produces chemicals, and they move, and it's beautiful. This is really awesome to know that this happens, and we had no idea. Uh, inside each emotion, there is a signal, a direction, and a, a, line, and, and a, sorry, a line action that I can take. It's self-knowledge. So that's a very long story too, but generally like example, as I said before, if you have um, fear and there is not an animal outside, then you can have a look inside of you. Why am I getting fear if there is not an animal trying to bite me? Am I living in the past? If, I'm, uh, if I have anxiety very often, then usually anxiety is a messenger that is coming to you to say you're living in the future. And not only that, you're, you're living in an apocalyptic future all the time that is keeping you very anxious. So they are beautiful messengers of how we're using our thoughts and our mind as well. But I cannot give you all this information right now because it's extend as well. Uh, I allow myself to feel all the emotions without identifying with them. Meaning, I'm not, ang I'm, not, I'm not angry. My body is 
throwing a, a chemistry of anger inside of me. So I'm not angry. My body is having a chemistry of anger, which is very different. I'm not depressed. I'm just having the chemistry of depression going through me, and it could be released if I let it go. I'm not a sad human being. I'm just having the chemistry of sadness going through my cells. So you're not identifying as a sad person, as an angry person. As a, it's just a chemistry that is happening through you. It's not you. I'm learning to feel in the present moment because the only way for you to feel an emotion is to be right now here with your body because the chemistry is happening right now. It's not happening later because they are automatic. I'm the only one responsible for my balance and wellness. Of course you are because you are the only one that can create chemistry inside of you. And that chemistry is the one that is going to make you feel comfortable or uncomfortable. Yeah? So let's have a look how it works now. With the, now we know the primary emotion is the one that just appears boom when you are angry or sad or look, whatever it is. And the secondary emotion is the way that we treat ourselves, that we create after we treat ourselves good or bad. Because we could say a limiting belief and we said, oh fuck, I'm so useless, so sensitive. And boom, another negative emotion, yeah? So let's say again, we have the husband, angry because the wife called him useless. Instead of saying, the husband, instead of saying to himself, oh fuck, I shouldn't feel anger, I always do this. He will say to himself, it's okay. It's normal for me to feel anger. All that is happening right now is I'm feeling the biology of my body. I'm a human and I'm allowed to feel all the emotions. There is no bad or good emotions. They are all fine. It's part of my biology. So when this man hears that in his mind, what is he going to feel? He's going to feel compassion towards himself because he's being human. Then he goes and add another one. Yes, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay for me to feel this. I'm a human. Then he feels kindness towards himself. Then he keeps adding more of that. He keeps repeating. All of the ones that you learn, just repeat them. And then he will feel courageous because he knows that it passes. It goes away. It's just chemistry. It lasts 90 seconds, 2.5 minutes. So you feel like, fuck, I can do this. I can't just wait 2.5 minutes. I just make it happen. Now courage appears. So this, all this acts like a mom looking after a baby, giving it little hugs and saying everything is okay, but you're doing it to your own self. You are looking after your own self. You are being compassionate towards you. You are being kind towards you, but you are doing it to you. That is called self-love. When you are capable of on your own, Look after your own self. You don't mistreat yourself. You look after you. You're giving love, patience, kindness, all the beautiful things. You're giving it to you. You don't need anyone. It's under your control. It's beautiful. And it's self-love because you're choosing something better for you. You're choosing something more loving for you. The other option is a nasty option for you. It's making you suffer. This one is not. This one is, you are looking after you. And when you look after you, you can give beautiful outside. Because now, what imagine the husband is going to say to the wife after he does this process? He's going to be kind towards her. Because inside of him, there is a higher frequency that is going to create something nice. It's not going to destroy anything outside because he, inside of him, there's something beautiful growing. As you can see, it's growing. Hmm? So the next step is to acknowledge the emotion. So how do we do this? Well, this is, what we do. This is how it looks like. So right now, I'm scared. So it's OK to be scared. That's the first step. So now I'm going to connect to my body. Oh, I see. 
So what we're going to do is going to look for the sensations in our body. This is acknowledging. We're going to look for the sensations that the chemistry is creating in our body. And we always feel the emotions in certain places. So example, fear, I feel it always around here. And I feel my heart rate going super fast. So I acknowledge, yes, I see it is fear inside of me. My heart rate is going really fast. My stomach is really tight. Oh, it's really tight here. What color is it? Ah, oh, it's yellow. It's a yellow energy there. And it looks like a ball like this. And it's, it's kind of moving like this. Oh, yes, I feel a light here going through me. And now my neck is really tight. And I keep observing. I ask, what color is it? What shape is it? What form is it? Is it moving? So I ask myself, so in this moment, I'm coaching myself through this emotion. We are learning how to self-coach ourselves through emotions. And in this moment, acknowledging the chemistry and the emotions, which is the same, we are connecting with our bodies. We are connecting and observing this chemistry moving through us and making us feel sensations. So now we're not thinking this is horrible, this is uncomfortable. We're just acknowledging that the, my neurons created in a chemistry and I, now it went through me and I feel it in here and I feel it there. And oh my God, my heart rate is going fast. It's okay to be feeling all this. It's okay, I'm a human and I'm allowed to feel this. He's my body and he's the chemistry of my body. I'm here with you, body. See the difference? This is you with your body. With your beautiful chemistry, present for it. Acknowledging that it's okay to, to be there. Hmm? Okay, after that, we accept it, meaning we don't judge it. Like, oh, fuck, I shouldn't be feeling this. I don't have time for this shit. I have to fucking do work. <laughs> Which is what we do say to ourselves all the time. Fuck, I fucking can't do this fucking shit. <laughs> That's what we do every time that we're feeling chemistry. Hmm? So we don't judge it, we don't mistreat ourselves. Hmm? We just, instead of mistreating, we self-love. Self-love. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Hmm? Then um, we don't make anyone or anything responsible for this chemistry because it is mine. No one is responsible for it. It doesn't matter if the wife told you that you piece of shit. Your brain created the chemistry. She didn't. She cannot go inside your brain and make the neurons make that chemistry. It's impossible. That is just impossible. But we do think that the wife was responsible. We do believe 100% that she made this chemistry happen in my freaking brain, and that's why I'm feeling this way. But she can't. Yeah? And then uh, the next step is taking action. Take responsibility for the emotion, connect with the emotion and the wisdom of emotion. Which I said before, all the emotions are like emails that come to us saying, hey, you have to watch your thoughts. You have to watch how you're using your mind. You're living in the past, you're living in the future. They all are only messengers telling you how you are using your mind. But I will tell you this story another day, <laughs> which is beautiful too. So emotions are pretty freaking awesome, very awesome. So your balance is not in other people's hands, in what they say about you, in their approval of you, in what they do or not. It's actually in your hands. You can create whatever chemistry you want, if you are aware. Your balance is not in the absence of emotions. Balance doesn't mean being happy all the time. Your balance is in you accepting and feeling all emotions, even if they feel uncomfortable, and letting them go. Letting them go means you just let the chemistry happen. 
the cells on their own are gonna, the, the, the receptors are gonna let go of the chemistry. And that it means letting go of an emotion. You allow your beautiful process to do its natural process and releasing. So that's letting go of an emotion. <laughs> so the only way is to be comfortable that with the idea that uncomfortable emotions are gonna arise. <laughs> it's just, that's the nature of humans. If you try to deny it, you're gonna suffer because it's just you're going against you. So the only way is being comfortable with that idea that it's gonna happen. They're gonna come up. The uncomfortable emotions are gonna come up, but the nice ones, the comfortable ones, the ones are gonna rise as well. This allow, this process that I just showed you allows you to regulate your nerve system. So now you're learning how to self-regulate. This is what is called self-regulation. Hmm? This is the process of how you regulate your chemistry, how you allow yourself to be human, how you allow yourself to, to understand yourself. <laughs> So um, when you, as I said before, if you don't allow these, the nerve system, the autonomic one is just gonna take over and just make you feel like shit forever because you don't allow the chemistry to go. So it just keeps creating. So I think this process of feeling emotions is awesome. Learning what they really are. And now you can use this to practice. It's not gonna happen straight away. It's a process of you learning how to react to it, how to manage them when they arise. And you have them all the time through the day. So you have so many opportunities to, to practice this. <laughs> so now, because you have this knowledge, now you can stop yourself and I'm like, oh, I have a chemistry going through me, an anger chemistry. You can handle it differently. Because now you, you have so many tools, so much knowledge that is beautiful and it could turn you into the master of your own self. I hope that you like it. <laughs> if you're an executive entrepreneur or investor who's sick of the stop-start cycle and the damaging effects alcohol has on your health, happiness and family, and you're ready to regain confidence, become more present with your spouse and children, reduce stress, anxiety and irritability, sleep better, increase focus and productivity and feel better quickly, you're invited to apply to become a Project 90 client. Applicants can apply for an introductory interview by visiting alcoholfreelifestyle.com slash project90. There's a link in the show notes, which you can just click, but that link is alcoholfreelifestyle.com slash project90.